cannabis stocks have been skyrocketing over the past weeks and in this video I'll be exposing a stock that no one is talking about even though it has already 500 million dollars in revenue and is on track to reach 600 million plus next year. All this while being profitable and with margins steadily increasing. This is the largest position in my investing portfolio so stick with me until the end to see the details of my position. Well, before telling you my favorite cannabis play for the upcoming bull run, let me just very quickly explain you why cannabis stocks are rising and why this trend is expected to continue for the next few months. Well, starting from the beginning, the largest cannabis bubble happened in late 2017, early 2018, when the first cannabis listed companies appeared like Aurora Cannabis, Canopy and Tilray. The valuations on those days reached insane levels, completely out of reality considering that most of these companies barely had revenue and were simply burning cash like crazy. As always, eventually the bubble popped and the stocks ended up crashing, leaving millions of investors with huge losses. Later on, for 2020's US presidential elections, Joe Biden started to talk about cannabis, basically promising to push the sector further and all cannabis stocks started to skyrocket again. As we know, Joe Biden won, but in 2021, the president said that the priority was now to control inflation and the cannabis subject would have to wait. This, with interest rates increasing and consequently the huge bear market we saw happening, led to cannabis stocks being completely in the lame for a long time. These pops that you see between the, this time and today are related to the Safe Banking Act, another catalyst for the sector, which is basically a bill to facilitate the interactions between financial services providers and legit cannabis businesses, as right now it's very difficult for US operators to do that. They can't even accept like card payments on their stores and most of banks don't want to have relationships with these businesses because of cannabis being federally illegal. This bill has uh, failed several times and these pops represent some of those times. Expectations were always very high but the outcome ended up disappointing. This bill is also very close to being passed this year which is also a great catalyst for the sector but the reason I wanted to tell you it's not related to this. Well around September as you may see cannabis stocks started to increase a lot again because the HHS provided its recommendation to the DEA that marijuana should be rescheduled from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3. The Schedule thing basically is a rank of risk for drugs and right now cannabis is at the same level as for instance heroin, which we all know it's unacceptable. Rescheduling cannabis means that companies selling cannabis for recreational purposes in the US may list themselves on the NASDAQ or on the New York Stock Exchange, while most people only know about Tilray, Canopy, Aurora and so on. Those are Canadian companies and that's why they can be listed in major US stock exchanges because right now the US operators only can be listed on the OTC markets which makes it very hard for institutional money to come in institutions move the markets and this is one of the very first times in history that retail investors can expose themselves to a sector before the big sharks do and examples include uh, Verano Holdings, Trulive, Green Thumb, Curaleaf and much more. For a larger list of options you can check the ETF MSOS, uh, check their holdings because you have like most of the really good US operators there but be careful because some of the holdings are not really trustworthy. Additionally, rescheduling cannabis also means that US operators will stop paying the 280E tax, an excise tax that currently eats a lot of these companies' margins and basically it's a, a, a tax that US imposes on uh, the sale of recreational cannabis in the US and by not paying this tax, these operators will increase very significantly their margins and free cash flow generation, becoming much more attractive for institutional money to get in. Again, these factors combined will lead to a multiples expansion and after the huge multiples contraction we've seen over the past few years, in my opinion, these days will mark the bottom of the entire sector, of the entire sector and there will be many winners. For instance, the Canadian companies we saw earlier 
will also benefit because they will be able to enter the US market without compromising the Nasdaq listing, something that most of them are waiting for a long time. Lastly, Germany just officially decriminalized cannabis starting on the 1st of April. In 2025, the second pillar of this law is expected to be passed, opening doors to receive international operators with cannabis dispensaries like the ones we see in North America. Now that you know why I'm bullish on the cannabis sector, it's time to show you my favorite pick and largest position of my portfolio, High Tide, ticker symbol H-I-T-I. High Tide was founded in 2009 by Raj Grover. Initially, it was just a store selling consumption accessories called Smoker's Corner, but through organic growth and strategic acquisitions, Raj has grown High Tide from one small shop of two employees into Canada's largest non-franchised cannabis retailer with over 165 locations and over 1,500 amazing team members and business interests spanning North America and also Europe. Reg is a serial entrepreneur which understands the cannabis market like no one and that's why iTide was able to stand out from competitors. The first time I invested in iTide, more than three years ago, the company had around 3% national market share. However, in the last quarter of 2021, High Tide launched a discount loyalty program, which was completely free, and now has over 1.3 million members who buy cannabis from iTide on a recurring basis. Raj wanted to go after the cannabis consumers who smoke regularly and so always want to look for the best cost quality deals and leveraging the acquisitions made in the CBD oil sector previously, which on that time were yielding super high EBIT the margins, the company was able to start this program selling cannabis at super low prices, being the loss leader to gain market share as fast as possible, both from existing competitors and from the illicit markets. After its tremendous success quarter after quarter, the economies of scale started to pick up and the company achieved free cash flow profitability five months ahead of plans, having now 10% of retail market share in Canada and being the clear leader in the space. Also, in the first quarter of this year, iTide achieved break-even on a net income basis, something that zero analysts were expecting to happen. The company has been able to steadily expand margins over time and now it's ready to come back to its high growth phase planning to open 20 to 30 more stores this year alone, while having the highs on the US and German situations, of course. The CEO already said they're just waiting for it to be legal in both countries to open stores right away, having already domestic companies on those uh, geographic locations, helping in preparing that bricks and mortars international expansion. It's also important to note that iTide launched a paid version of the loyalty program a few quarters ago, and in the last earnings report, the CEO made it very clear that the subscribers are growing faster than ever. Even though it's still a residual amount, it shows how customers value the company's deals, especially considering that the price of the subscription just recently went up and, according to the CEO, none of the subscribers failed to renew. Well, I tied with the largest holding by far in my portfolio, so I could spend the entire day talking about it. All in all, it is, in my opinion, the most well-managed company in this space and that's why it is a clear leader in Canada and why I believe this incredible management team will be able to expand its model into other countries like US and Germany. And even if that's not the case, in Canada alone they have the potential to reach $1 billion in revenue in just a few years while being already profitable, a rarity in this cannabis space. And trading at around 5 times EV EBITDA it's just a bargain both on an absolute basis and when comparing to the sector. I believe that when institutional money starts to flow in, iTide will be one of the easiest choices considering it's already listed on the Nasdaq, it's one of the very few companies that can make money selling cannabis, as well as because of its tremendous cheap valuation. Finally, the CEO, which you probably already understood I like very much, he is the largest shareholder of the company and never sold a single share. I really advise you to listen to iTide's earning calls and to his interviews. You will totally get what I'm saying. Before finishing the video, as I promised, let me show you my position. I currently own 
18,000 shares with an average price of $1.84. So I'm up a bit over 10%. As I said, the first time I invested in them was more than three years ago. So for me, this is not a good result yet. But fortunately, I was able to decrease my average price by buying a lot of shares in the 130s range. And in this video, I just wanted to at least put it on your radar because I'm expecting parabolic moves with the upcoming bull run in the cannabis sector. And basically no one knows about this company because it was not listed in the 2017, 2018 bubble. So I really wanted you to know about it. Let me know in the comments if you want a larger video with all the details possible about the business. I would really love to do that. Thanks for watching. See you in the next time.